This is John from Global Traveler. Today I'm talking travel with Steve Delinsky, travel and food reporter and 12 times James Beard Foundation Award winner. That's pretty impressive, Steve. How are you? I'm great. Uh, how are you, John? I, I am good. I've been a, a follower of yours. I feel like I've I've learned so much from you over the 30 or so years. I've watched you starting with CLTV and and all the way through. And, and we got a lot to talk about food, travel, and pizza. I can't wait. But you had kind of an interesting start. I, I, your biography on your site, um, you started, you were raised in a kosher family, kosher household in Minnesota, not Minneapolis, but Minnesota. So how did you develop your love of food? That's a great question. I honestly probably could have ended up um, being very satisfied with just brown, overcooked, monochromatic, starchy food from the 70s and lots of tuna casseroles. But I had a, um, a sister-in-law uh, from Australia, my brother's wife, who was really into food. And they would always cook at their apartment when I was in junior high school. And I would go over there and I would see them make, you know, Szechuan shrimp and um, lots of Asian food. And it was just very intriguing. I'd never seen that before. And as I got into college and I went to the University of Wisconsin and there was more of a restaurant community in Madison. And then when I graduated, she gave me some of these... Um, there were these small cookbooks called the Australian Women's Home Weekly series of cookbooks. And they had beautiful pictures of all this Thai food, Chinese food, Malaysian food. And it just sparked my interest. And like ever since then, I mean, I started looking in food magazines. I just I realized there was this other world out there that I hadn't been able to experience and I hadn't had a chance to, to try. And I feel like I've been making up for lost time ever since. Well, I was going to say, once you realize that, did, and did you go like for the near near future, did you start going crazy and just trying everything at that point? Absolutely, everything. I mean, I read about food, of course, and I'd never experienced any of these places because I, I wasn't traveling very much in my early 20s, and I was working in television. And after I, my first job was in Upper Michigan and the Upper Peninsula, and then I went to Iowa, but I was always seeking places out. I remember when I was in the UP, there was a Thai place 50 miles away, and I would go there once a week for lunch. And when I got to the Quad Cities in Davenport, Iowa, uh, there was a, a Jewish deli that had opened up and um, it was right downtown and I was a regular there. And then, of course, when I got to Chicago in 93, I might just my head exploded. I just couldn't believe you know all the great restaurants in Chicago. I remember making a note of this, like I lived in Lincoln Park. I lived on Halstead above the King Crab right near the Steppenwolf Theater. Nice. And I remember that I would work my way out in concentric circles <laughs> from that point going to Ito Sushi and Uncle Tanu's Middle Eastern and just really exploring the city and just, you know, falling in love with the different neighborhoods, going up uh, Devon Avenue and in West Rogers Park for Indian and Pakistani food and going to Albany Park for Persian. It was just like a whole new world for me. And when did you develop your love of pizza? Because you're known for pizza. Yeah, you know, I'd always loved pizza. Um, I wouldn't say it was my favorite food. Uh, I think I leaned more Asian, Thai and Korean for sure. But I think the thing that sparked it for me, there were two things. One was the John Stewart rant on The Daily Show where he ripped into Chicago pizza. And not and I didn't feel like I was it was a, a wounding my personal pride because I wasn't from here. I didn't grow up in Chicago. I, I moved here in my early 20s. But I felt that the things they were attacking were wrong. They just they were going after stuffed pizza. They were not going they were trying to go after deep dish, but they were really going after stuffed. And then the other thing that sort of sparked it was this. Uh, eater listicle of the seven hottest pizza places in Chicago, which I took issue with. And I thought, it's, had anybody actually ever done a deep dive the proper way to research a dish or an item or an ingredient? And no, nobody had. There was one or two books written about pizza in Chicago, but not, nothing very thorough. So I just, I took it upon myself in 2016, 2017 to just get to the bottom of it once and for all and, and take like a, a five month snapshot of Chicagoland and see where we are pizza wise and who are some of the sacred cows that have been getting a free pass? And who are some of the places that are maybe under the radar? And that was kind of, then I just got into it as kind of a, a research project as a, and, you know, as a reporter, just really trying to understand the, the backstories of pizza here. You know, it's funny, that's music to my ears because a lot of the global travelers based in, for the most part, based on the East Coast, New York, Philadelphia area. And I, I hear from them and from other friends out there all the time, oh, Chicago, deep dish, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm I'm with you. I, I love the thin crust. And to, to just label Chicago as a deep dish town, I think is such an injustice to all the other pizzas here. 
not just an injustice, but it is such an uneducated, ignorant put down. Uh, because when you talk to those friends in, on the East Coast and they say, oh, Chicago pizza, blah, blah, blah. Well, then I, I, then I ask them very unemotionally to unpack that. Okay, well, let's talk about it. Like, when you say that, what's, what's in your mind? And they're thinking of Giordano's, which is a stuffed pizza, or they're thinking of Nancy's, maybe it was stuffed, or they were in Chicago during college 15 years ago for a weekend, and they went to whatever was near their hotel downtown, you know, or they went to Pequod's or Gino's East, and that's it. And, you know, they've never been to My Pie. Never been to La Briola, never been to George's, never been to Millie's, never been to any of the great deep dish places. And so when I tell them that, they're like, oh, gee, it's sort of like if I go to New York and I only eat pizza in Times Square and I say, oh, New York pizza is garbage. It's just greasy cardboard. But, well, yeah, if you're only going to go to one neighborhood in Times Square while the tourists go, that's what you're going to get. And so that's what was happening in Chicago. I, I couldn't agree more. So what is the perfect Steve Dolinsky pizza? Toppings, uh, uh, style, everything. The style would be artisan thin. So a, a two to three day ferment, to cold fermentation, preferably with an all natural starter to give it a little bit more of a sourdough tang, um, but thin, uh, 18 inch pie, like, like a New York pie that you can fold in half with your three fingers on the, on the heel, a very deeply burnished brown edge, looking under the undercarriage, you know, two to three color, two to three shades of brown and black, um, crispy. And then, you know, honestly, besides the sauce and cheese, one, maybe two toppings. And as a Chicagoan, it's going to be sausage and jardinera probably for me. What, what is your stand on uh, pineapple or any other so-called uh, non-typical ingredient or uh, toppings? Well, I don't typically like fruit on a pizza, although I've had like grilled peaches on a pie like that's been a grilled pizza with like prosciutto but i don't necessarily like the fruit in fact i don't even like raw mushrooms or raw peppers or raw onions notice i'm saying raw right. because when you put them on a pie and then you bake it all the water comes out of it and so i want to ask have you pre-roasted or sauteed those mushrooms or onions or peppers uh or spinach you know, I don't want all that liquid. And so the same thing with fruit and with pineapple, I would rather have that pineapple roasted to have, draw that moisture out. And then you could place it on a pie in small amounts, uh, balancing something that is spicy, like an enduya or a sopressata. And for the, you, you got two um, theories, I guess, for lack of a better term. You've got the optimal bite ratio and you have the pizza I grew up eating. Could you explain those? I, yeah, I the pig, the theory. yeah, the pig syndrome uh, pizza I grew up eating is the very Chicago thing. I mean, I think it's an, an, a national thing. You you tend to like the pizza you grew up, you know, having as a kid. And that really forms your opinions on pizza. Now, I'm a little different in that I grew up on Shakey's, uh, which was a chain. Is it I? Okay, so Sacramento, 1956, I think it started. But we had it in Minnesota, so that was my childhood pizza. I recently went back to Shakey's. I went to one in Palm Springs. Boy, it was... Was it disappointing? Uh -huh. um, so I, I, I've, my palate has matured and I've grown to the point where I no longer think that's the case. Uh, but so pizza is, P pig syndrome is the pizza you grew up eating. And so like if you're from the southern suburbs here in Chicago, Homewood, Flossmoor, you're an Aurelio's person. If you grew up on the North Shore, you tend to be a Barnaby's or a Lou Malnati's person. Um, and so that really forms what we call the pizza cognition theory. The OBR, the optimal bite ratio, is what I'm looking for in any slice in fact, I'm looking for it in just about anything I eat, if it's a sandwich or a taco or a slice of pizza. I want equal amounts, crust, cheese, sauce, topping, crust, cheese, sauce, topping in every bite. I don't want to get a mouthful of dough or just a mouthful of melted cheese, which tends to happen with a lot of stuffed pies. Uh, those tend to be one note. And that's where Chicago pizza gets kind of a bad rap because it's so overwhelming and they call it you know, lasagna in a bread bowl. Well, it's a lot of dough in some cases, but but not all cases, classic deep dish shouldn't be like that that crazy. But the OBR is that that balance. And do you have an ideal beverage to go along with pizza? Yeah, you know, I'm not opposed to red wine if I'm having a tomato sauce on the pie, but I just think beer is better. I, I like a, because of the yeast, because of the activity, because of the fermentation, I like a beer. Um, not an IPA. Not, I can't do something bitter, but I like a, like a Hellas or a Kolsch, um, something you know, hoppy and bright and zippy. A Belgian beer is great. That to me is a great companion. 
and you've been all over the country t- uh, testing pizzas and, and all that. Is there a certain region you think that has better pizza than others or more better places for pizza? Well, there, you know, I have not been to New Jersey. Like I need to go to New Jersey and I need to go to Philadelphia, but I will say New Haven is an interesting pocket of pizza. However, it is, I mean, it's a time capsule for sure, but it's five pizzas, all the same style. Um, I think New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles have the most interesting pizzas. I mean, Chicago, I give an edge because we have more styles here. Mm -hmm. New York certainly has better New York style Sicilians and grandmas, without a doubt. And I love New York pizza. Um, People always think like, oh, you're from Chicago. You must hate New York. I'm like, no, no, that that argument is so passe. Um, Some of my favorite pizzas are in New York City. But I will say Los Angeles. I mean, that's the reason we were doing a, a pizza city fest out there last spring and uh, and this next spring in April, um, there's a lot of amazing pizza on the West Coast. And you've got to drive to get it. I mean, it's not all in one neighborhood, but from Santa Barbara down to San Diego, there are amazing pizzas in, in LA. So I like cities where there's lots of styles of pizza because I think variety you know, makes things interesting. So New York, Chicago, and LA. Well, certainly a good pizza is well worth the drive. I have no problem driving for, for if, if I'm going to get a good pizza, I'm in. So yeah, in your, LA, you can't go wrong in LA right now. You mentioned your tours. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so Pizza City Tours started in uh, 2018, right when the first book came out. I've since had a second book called The Ultimate Chicago Pizza Guide. But those tours are every summer. So basically Memorial Day through Halloween, um, four tours every weekend, one by bus, three by foot. And we do West Loop, we do Bucktown, Wicker Park, downtown. Um, we do custom tours, private tours quite a bit. Uh, we can just create an itinerary for people. So um, those have been great. And we've been doing those, like I say, for, for five, six years now. So what can people expect on it? Do you have a set, do you have your set five pizza places? Or does it, if I take a tour this weekend, say, then two weeks or a month from now, could I take it again? Would it be different places? Well, the bus tour, they all tend to stay the same. So like the West Loop tour is the West Loop. Those are the four places you're going to go. You're going to see four styles of pizza. Uh, Bucktown Wicker Park, same thing. Those are always the same four places, four different styles of pizza. The bus tour does change because we've got some you know, flexibility. Um, one of our partners, uh, Polly G's, had a fire last week. So we could not stop there. So we just made a pivot and went to a new place we're going to called Grammar which does a Sicilian pie. Um, it's called In the Schoolhouse, which is a really neat spot near Cabrini Green. Um, and then we go to um, uh, Bar Cargo for Roman style. And that bus tour typically is Pizza Lobo for a New York style and Polly G's for a Detroit style. So we can we can change things up on the bus tour, but they're generally the same four places. Any thoughts of taking those to a lot of other cities, spreading it out? Yeah, well, I wanted to do it in L.A. In fact, I, I did a walkthrough in Silver Lake and Echo Park, and I wanted to do a walk. And I, I found somebody to do the tour, and then I just couldn't I just couldn't pull the trigger on it. It's um, it's just hard when I'm not living there. Sure. Um, so, uh, But I do feel like L.A., we could do a walking tour, which would be so funny because no one thinks you can walk in L.A. But there are so many great pizza places now within a mile uh, that we could do it um, in Silver Lake. And what do you think the key is to finding a, a good pizza? You're, you're playing a vacation, say, to wherever, any state, Dallas, Texas. What is what is your strategy for finding a good pizza place? And will you try to find multiple ones? I don't, I don't mean to pigeonhole you just for pizza, though. Well, I do my research. I talk to people who do what I do uh, in those cities, whether they're reporters, writers, influencers, or what have you. And I reach out to them and ask for their suggestions. And then I try to triangulate those suggestions with other people. So I'm researching Nashville right now. Um, I did a couple days there a few months ago. And I've got about 20, I've been at 26, 27 places that I thought were pretty decent. And then I'm going back in two weeks and I'm going to try a few more. And then I'm going to drive south to Alabama and try a few in Birmingham and Huntsville. I want to put together 40 for a pizza festival in Nashville. So I'm looking for anything and everything. The, the problem with most cities is that there tends to be the similar styles, right? So there's a lot of wood-fired right. pies in Nashville. So they're doing a Neapolitan or a Neo-Neapolitan. And, but, you know, in Clarksville, which is a 40-minute drive, there's an amazing Chicago-style place doing deep dish and tavern style. So who knew, right? So I just, again, from asking around and talking to people, you find the, the little, 
nooks and crannies. So aside from potentially that, and uh, do you have any other projects in the works? Is there another book coming out? No other books. I just don't have the bandwidth right now. Okay. Um, I think if I did another book, it would be a national pizza book, which would make a lot of sense considering what I do in my sp- spare time. Because uh, I just have the podcast, which is the Pizza City podcast. That's every other Friday, and that's coming up on four years. And so whenever I travel, I'm looking for great pizzas as a result of the of the podcast. I went to Japan in a month or so, and I'm looking for pizza places in Tokyo. So, uh, but I think the projects right now are, are Pizza City Fest in L.A. in the spring and Pizza City Fest in the summer or fall in Nashville. And uh, just continuing, I'm still at NBC News in Chicago every Thursday night at 10. So any... Any picks on cities, aside from food, do you have any picks for cities that you just love to visit? I mean, I if I had my druthers, I'd go back to Japan in a heartbeat. You know, I, that's my that's my special place. I just I, f- I just feel so uh, enamored with what the culture has for, for guests there. It's a very uh, guest focused culture uh, where they want to serve you and treat you and and. Um, make you feel like welcome and warm. And um, just the hospitality model there is incredible. And the food's amazing. I mean, I love sushi. I love rice. I love uh, vegetables. Um, You know, I think Seoul is an amazing place as well. I think in America, um, there are hidden gems. Like, you know, Louisville has some gems. And, um, oh, I mean, Los Angeles. I just, I can't get over how exciting Los Angeles is right now. Um, It's, excuse me it's um it's a dynamic excuse me dynamic place uh there's so much more there than what people think i think it's like you know people outside of chicago pigeonhole chicago pizza is a certain thing because they were here once i think people have the same thought about la like the vegan or the gluten-free or whatever but there's so much there i mean the korea town's incredible san gabriel valley is like being in china uh best dim sum i've had in america so uh, there is so much to try in Los Angeles. We, my wife and I are going to spend the whole month of April there. Wow. And we're going to really nice. try to put down roots there as we get gear up for our pizza fest at the end of April. And that gives me a couple of weeks to really explore. So I, right now in America, I think LA is the most exciting place to eat. Now, I, I know your resume. I know the 12th uh, James Beard Awards. I know how hard you've worked to get where you are. Do you ever hear people, I would imagine you do, saying, Boy, I would love your job. That'd be great. Just eat pizza all the time. It's uh, <laughs> it's not easy, first of all. Um, it sounds fun on the surface, I guess. Uh, when I asked people to come with me when I was researching the books, um, you know, they couldn't just come to one place. They had to come for a day or two. And each day was four or five places. And after three places, you know, they're so full and they can't move and they, they over, overeat and they haven't paced themselves and I said, okay, well, so imagine doing this for the next four weeks. And they're like, yeah, I'm good. So <laughs> it, it usually it weeds out people quite, you know, quite quickly. Um, yeah, you just have to, you have to work. You have to, you have to put your hours in. I mean, I've been doing this for, you know, 30 years. And you've been doing it great for 30 years. And, and oh, Chicago, and, Chicago and especially, like I said, I followed you going back to the CLTV days. I love your work. Before I let you go, tell everybody where they can find out all the information about you. Yeah, my website is stevedolinsky.com. That's a pretty easy place. And then I would say um, the pizzacityusa.com has a lot of our pizza info. All right, Steve, I appreciate your time. I will continue following you. I'm hoping for um, you know, a pizza tour in Chicago at some point in, the, in the, the, the next round. Until then, I appreciate your time and thank you, sir. Thank you, John. We'll see you on a tour. Thank you.